Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Wild Chat Facts. Today's episode is going to be all about horses. Mar, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And uh, I was galloping through my list of fun things to find about horses. And um, we know so much about horses because horses are in our lives. So there are a couple of things that I found interesting. And one of them was um, the, and this is super random, but I wanted to go with something random. So okay. the underside of a horse's hoof is actually called a frog. And although the name sounds hilarious, a frog peels off several times a year and it creates new growth. And the hoof is actually not just designed as only like a shoe, but it's also like a circulatory pump. Oh, so it yeah. helps them keep blood flowing. That's why they say three-legged horses, it actually doesn't work too well for them when they get injured because it's harder to keep that circulation yeah. going. So it's a lot more complex than we thought. Yeah, I read that too. Basically, I was thinking of like those uh, um, stress ball kind of pump things that have a tube on each end when you press it and it pulls the fluid. That's basically what a, a hoof does when it steps on the ground. That's the equivalent of the pressing and then the fluid gets pulled. So that's kind of how it acts as a circulatory pump. I thought that was mm -hmm. interesting. I'm going to start with a little mini trivia, Marty. Do you know who introduced horses to the new world? Um, I will say, say Christopher Columbus when he first yeah, arrived or Cortez. It was mm -hmm. Christopher Columbus introduced horses. Mm -hmm. And I did say the new world. I didn't, I didn't say America. So I, I had to keep it. Yes. The Espanola Island. I figure when you said the new world, it was yes. sounded so Christopher Columbus. Columbus. -y, yes, that is. You're right. I kind of gave it away there without realizing it. All right. <laughs> well, do you want to know? <laughs> Woohoo! She's so excited. Do you want to know why the lollipop was named lollipop? It has something to do with the horse. But what happened? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so in the 1900s, one of the most famous horses uh, was called Lollipop. So that's why. It's spelled slightly different. Okay. But um, so they called the Lollipop Lollipop. Okay. So I'm going to go the other kind of the other way. The, the Snickers candy bar was actually named after the favorite horse of the creator, Frank Mars, in 1930. So Snickers was named after a horse where a lot of people name horses Snickers. I don't know why that, that's kind of a popular horse name. So that went full circle on that one completely. Like, you were the inspiration and now you're named after. Which which way do you want to take it? Now, we have, we think horses are the fastest animal we can ride on. But that's actually not true. No. Horses are not the fastest animal that humans can race with. It's neither camels either. Neither is cam neither are camels. Uh, it's actually ostriches. See, I want to throw a caveat into this because ostriches, yes, run faster than those two animals you mentioned. But I've seen ostrich races. Once you put a human on the back of them, they don't run that fast or that agilely. So I'm but that's because they have a, a person on top, but the animal yeah, itself can run 60 miles an hour, mm, whereby okay. a horse is like 45 the fastest. So like when that. you say race, I'm thinking a human on their back race, in which case... No, no, I'm, I'm saying cool. animals we will race. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. All right. Mm -hmm. Because okay. if we talk about an fastest animal, then cheetah will always win. True. So Unless that's why I... On its back and, then, and then it's not going anywhere. Neither is the human. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm going to start loosening up the meaning of a horse because the first bicycle was actually called a hobby horse. And it had no pedals, which I don't know. I, to me, if it has no pedals, I don't consider it a bicycle. But a German baron named Karl van Dreis made the first major development uh, when he created a steerable two-wheeled contraption in 1817. So apparently their definition of, of bike is going to be two wheels and steerable here. Uh, known by many names, including <laughs> Velocipede, Hobby Horse, uh, Drazen, and Running Machine. Again, I'm arguing if there's no pedals, it's not a bike. If you call it a running Yeah, but you're running with it. Yeah, you're just sitting running, on it. Running Machine's perfect. Um, so the early invention made by Drace is widely acknowledged as the father of the bicycle. 
So hobby horse, name of the first bicycle. <laughs> well, if you want to find a vampire and you're in Romania, I got you. I got, I got you. Okay. Just throw a stone. <laughs> don't eat no. garlic for a week okay. <laughs> so if you want to find a vampire according to romanian legends you're going to and i don't know why this is so just just go with it you will need a seven-year-old boy and a white horse okay it makes uh, no absolute sense just i'm just telling you what the romanian okay. i'm picturing like cupid like a little cherub on a horse and i don't know why i'm picturing cupid but i am um Mario, your hair's looking a little lighter these days. Did you did you use some horse urine? Was that because because apparently in, <laughs> in the Renaissance of Venice, that was that was what women used to dye their hair blonde. They used horse urine to lighten it up there. So hey, maybe instead of henna or something like that, you might want to try some horse. No, urine. no, I use pigeon dung. Pigeon dung is another era. That was from a different era. I think that the horse urine is just so much. The fun. Renaissance. The Renaissance is the horse. The ancient yes. Rome is the pigeon dung. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds incredible. But yeah. if you're in Waco, Texas, or Waco, 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 Texas, I apologize for anybody in Waco, Texas that I say Waco. I know. Um, if you throw a banana peel on the street, it's actually very illegal because a horse could slip and fall. Okay. Forget right. humans. Well, I just, I think we, we forget to really factor in how big of an influence horses had on the development of the United States. I mean, we've talked about even rattlesnakes rattle so horses wouldn't step on them. And now that there's less horses, they're rattling less uh, in the snake video. But I mean, I've got rules in here that like in places around the world, they have to have like a tie up in front of their business for horses still. Still? Even though hardly anybody use horses anymore. There's still a code in the law. I think it was in like New Zealand or something where you still have to have like a horse post in front of your business. Um, Actually, in Colombia, they still tie their horses like light posts or something. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't force people to have a, an official post in front of the, the building. But um, yeah, I, we forget how much of an influence horses had. Um, so much so that in 1900, at the Paris Olympics... Some of the invent, events that you wouldn't think of, live pigeon shooting and long jump for horses. Long jump for horses was an event at the Olympics in Paris in 1900. Wow. Mm -hmm. They also mm -hmm. used to jump from high altitudes. That yeah, in, um, Atlantic City, I think they had a, like a, di a, a diving horse or something that went into the ocean. I've seen those, wow. uh, those images. So if you need a passport, you may need a passport for your horse, your donkey, or any zoo species like zebras. If you're gonna go to the UK, they require ponies, donkeys, they require a passport. So next time you travel with your horse, make sure you get a passport for it. And make sure he's named Snickers or Lollipop, whichever one you wanna go with, Snickers or Lollipop. It's like okay, being so the Smith, go the, for the, it. The, the horse genre, you know, I'm Smith or, or whatever the most common name is. Um, hey, Mar, did you know that there was not one single pony in the Pony Express? No ponies. No ponies. ponies really aren't known for like distance running guys. So it was always a funny name to begin with. They were all horses. And what a lot of people don't know is thanks to the um, Telegraph, the Pony Express lasted about a year. So the idea came about, they set up all the way stations, all the stuff, the trade-offs, everything that you, we hear about the Pony Express, the whole thing took place. I think it was just over a year, if I recall, the fact I came across at a year. I think it was like 15 or 16 months. But for the place it has in history, it was a very short-lived thing, thanks to the Telegraph. It wasn't necessary anymore. Yeah, but it was so expensive to send Telegraphs that it was cheaper to just have a, the a guy on a horse relayed by another guy. And that'd be because you got to hire a person every X umpteen miles, feed the horses. That's, that's a very good point. So I, I think it was just probably expensive regardless for a long yeah. distance message. So yeah. yeah, not only that for safety issues, that message may get lost, may have gotten lost. So for well, safety that's also some, of the, some of the ways Indians took revenge, they would actually knock down the telegraph wires and stuff so they couldn't communicate with uh, the people. So, or the ponies. 
in the express the ponies were the substitute so they could have kept it up in the areas where the indians were on rampages because they were they would cut down all the the telegraph poles and stuff like that because they, they knew that's all they needed to do to break the communication so yeah so horses they're actually very smart they um if you train a horse properly with kindness the horse will have a long because you can train a horse either kindly or you can break their souls or break their behavior so mm -hmm. if you break their souls they're more easily reactive if there is a need for an emergency and they may not protect you mm -hmm. like in in case of a fire or something that would require you trusting the horse they most likely won't do anything to yeah you. but if you break their pattern yet respect their spirit they will be more likely to literally go blindfolded into anything and even jump from high dives because they just trust that you yeah. will do the best for them in the best manner. But uh, they're so smart that actually are able to learn how to undo door ha uh, door latches mm -hmm. in order to free everyone else. So yeah. mischievous I mean, little creatures there. Yeah, we just don't really have that today where like you could train a horse to be a vehicle or a pet. And we just don't really have any kind of equivalent like that today where we have to make that distinction. But that's really what Maria is talking about is, are you, are you trying to just get your vehicle to work or are you treating the animal like a pet and you're going to get the exact results? Is it going to take you from A to B because you broke it and you just needed a vehicle or is it your pet and a, like a member of the family? So Exactly. Well, talk about revering horses. In Toronto, police horses actually have their own collectible trading cards, which is ah! pretty cool. Because <laughs> they do it for athletes and like respected members of society. So I just thought it was really cool the police horses had their own trading cards. I want. Yeah. I've been to Toronto and I didn't know about this. So now wow. next time I go. So guys, next time you go to Toronto and if you see the trading cards or if you have them, Share with yeah, us in the comments. Awesome. That'll be really cool. Yeah, share. Or, or if you have a cool horse with a cool hack or something that your horse, if you have a horse. Uh -huh. Because horses are very complex creatures. They're actually very gentle animals and very skittish. So you do have to work with them to ease them into things. Mm -hmm. So it will be really fun. But if you want to have a superstition, because we got to have more, keep a black cat near horses for good luck. Okay. And if you, you got to look over your left, your left shoulder, your left shoulder, <laughs> when you meet a white horse and you will see uh, evil spirits. So, so if you see a white horse and you look to your left, you may actually see evil spirits. Or you're Hindu. Because if you're Hindu, the Hindu associate the horse with the cosmos. And a white horse was considered the last incarnation of Vishnu. So Ooh. white horse is very, very revered. Nothing to do with evil spirits in uh, in the Hindu culture. Love it. And there's mm -hmm. some species of horses. We did in a horse video. I think it was only in Spanish. Maybe it was in English. I apologize, guys. But I'm just recalling a video that we did in Undiscovered Worlds or Universos Abiertos. And they, there is a species of horse that is like silver. Mm -hmm. Like the horse is silver. It shines. I'm surprised there are no more of those everywhere mm -hmm. they're just kind of rare and, and absolutely gorgeous it might have been in the silver video we had done a, a, a video just on the color. no this was in the horse video i oh, did a horse video. all right all right so it was in the horse video but i think it was only in spanish so okay am i up yes so traffic lights are pretty important it's kind of tough to uh to get around without traffic lights these days with the amount of cars we have on the road but traffic lights actually predate cars Traffic lights even predate electricity because there was police officers on the corners that could manually flip between stop and go. And they were used originally to regulate horse-drawn carriages. Yeah, and I bet the collisions were high. There were other lights when they didn't want to hire a guy to sit there and pull that actually functioned uh, using gas, apparently, because there are traffic lights that would explode. So don't know how that worked as far as the timing. There's probably a mechanism in between. Like when we think of machines, we think they're electrical. But some of the first machines were like coin op for um, like holy water and stuff like that for churches 
where when you put in a coin, it would just turn a gear and then you would get something. So there was probably a gear set like you would have on your watch after 30 seconds. It would shut a door. I'm guessing, guys. So if you had a light, it would be glowing red, and then it would shut the red door and open the green door, and that same exactly. side would glow. Mm -hmm. um, educated guess, but guess none. That's, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Now, they do say if you are thinking about buying a horse, make sure you do not get a horse where you can see the whites of its eyes. And there's a reason why. Uh, apparently, you will not be able to do anything with that horse. And most of the times, when, when even dogs, when you see the whites of their eyes, it's usually they're in panic mode. Okay. Or they're really stressed out. Or like if you see somebody with their eyes open, it just gives you that feeling of menacing. Okay. And that's the same thing with horses. And with dogs, as a, as a tip, if you see a dog doing that and there is a child or someone nearby, please be safe because that could be a sign of this dog is getting really upset and it okay. could bite. So horses seem to have the same characteristics. So I keep doing this. I apologize. It looks creepy, but it's the best way I can describe what's going on. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's what we're going to take from this section, guys. Maria looks creepy. That's that's what we got left with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever I can do to educate and, and yes, entertain. Yes. Um, hey, Mario, you want to take a, a, a wild, wild, wild guess at what hippophobia is a fear of? It's not hippopotamus, guys. It's not <laughs> hippopotamus. It is horses. Yes, and the reason is that hippopotamus actually means river horse. So a hippo, is, it, and it's ironic because a hippo is a lot more related to a pig than it is a horse. Uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of really fun, like, what they used to be called names out there for animals. Um, and yes, they, they basically hippopotamus was river horse. And so hippophobia, because they used to call horses that, then you end up with hippophobia as fear of horses. And seahorses are the slowest horses in the world. Because they're a very slow fish and they're hippocampuses. So, horses. Yep. That was my fact. That, that, <laughs> that's my right thing when deers can jump higher than a house because houses typically don't jump. Yes, yes. We're hearkening back to the, the fun now. So the good old days. But the, the thing is, actually, uh, seahorses, they tie themselves. In, in the weed, seaweed. So they move like a one mile per hour if, yes. if they even. Sloth so. and seahorse race, sea race could be interesting. Especially since in sloth. water, in water, this, this sloth will definitely yeah, win. Three times faster in water than land. I don't know why I love that fact. I brought it up like the last three videos, but that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoy it too, or you didn't hear it. It's the awesome. <laughs> that's great. Your turn. Am I? Okay. All right. Let's Go for see. it. You want to hear something kind of weird? So World War II, uh, there was a guy named Don Carcos, and uh, he was blind 64 years uh, thanks to a shrapnel wound. And his sight was miraculously restored when he was headbutt by a racehorse that he was caring for. So went blind thanks to the war, 64 years later, headbutt by a horse, so caring for animals can also bring benefits to you, usually emotionally, not via a headbutt and bringing your sight back. But <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder what part of the brain, um, maybe there was something clogging it. Like many times it's just a clogging thing or just a stimulation, mm -hmm. like, a, like a shock therapy used yep. to be very popular in the past. Uh, to stimulate certain parts of the brain, it could be that the, the hit may have stimulated I I didn't look up the year, but it had to have been recently because World War II was in the early 40s and he yes. was blind for 64 years. So that would have been right around like 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, so this must have happened relatively recently. <laughs> wow. Um, so what I found really interesting is once you correct the differences uh, between the pro like proportions between men and horses, men like humans are actually proportionally stronger based on on that correction which i found that to be incredible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maria just stole one of my trivia questions everybody she stole one of my trivia questions um i stole okay yes. i ran away with it, away with it. a hack for all the chefs out there guys 
Okay, well, a hack for all the chefs that happen to have horses. Um, in South America, gauchos are actually known to put raw steaks underneath their saddles, and then they would work all day riding their horses, and it would tenderize the meat. And then they just pull it out from under the saddle and cook it up at the end of the day, and they have a nice tenderized piece of steak there. I'm sure they wrapped it on something because the sweat of the horse... Yes. will definitely add some serious flavor to them. I'm sure there was cautionary taken, but it definitely was not refrigerated. So it was it was in room uh, climate temperature throughout the day being pounded upon and then cooked up. Super hot because the sweat is... So I bet you actually even cooked it a little bit. That is probably like a ribeye. It's a yeah. ribeye now. Not get into this thought too far. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the capybaras. Capybaras are the largest rodent, and there was actually um, evidence of extremely even larger capybaras that were the size of horses. But capybaras and a horse can actually run just as fast. A regular horse. I'm not talking about race horses. If they were like equal sizes, because I can't imagine a, like a normal sized capybara outrunning a horse. Interesting. That's okay. We'll have to delve into that a bit more. So the first Hollywood stuntman was an ex-U.S. cavalryman, Frank Hannaway, who was cast in The Great Train Robbery. It was a film in 1903, back in the silent days, for his ability to fall off a horse without hurting himself. That was the job requirement. Who can fall off a horse and not hurt themselves? You got the job. Wow. That's what stuntmen do today. Do something stupid and don't harm yourself so you can do it several times. Fall down so the stairs for like... You know, three story high mm -hmm. in a row. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so I said something in the after show about dolphins that was in dolphins. I remember saying I didn't have it in my facts. Well, it's because it wasn't dolphins, it was actually horses. So inhaling a horse's breath was a cure for whooping cough. Okay. So in the after show of dolphins, I said something about I think there was blah blah, because you said something about the Saxons. So I just wanted to clarify that here. It was only in the after show anyway. Okay. But still nice. I don't know if I've shared this in the past on uh, Undiscovered, but there was actually a reason that um, uh, the castle stairs are winded a particular direction if you go into a castle, um, because most people are right-handed. So they want the people to have to switch their offhand that are invading, that are going up the stairs. So there's actually a reason why they twist the direction they twist within castles. It's a defensive... Uh, thing and it's uh, to benefit the defenders of the castle because they can keep using their right hand. Well, there's a reason that firehouses have circular stairways also. And this is hilarious because back in the day they used to use horses to pull the fire engines. There weren't fire trucks and stuff. So horses have been used longer in firefighting probably than actual vehicles just time-wise. Um, but it turned out that the, the horses used to be stabled on the ground floor and then the firemen would stay on top. But the horses actually started to learn how to walk up the staircases. So to stop <laughs> the horses from walking up the staircases, they had to make circular staircases and then like your sliding poles and stuff <laughs> to keep them separate from the firemen. <laughs> hey, you got some carrots there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, what you, got? what you got up here? Up here looks fun. <laughs> this is warm, let's stay here. <laughs> Whose bed is it anyway? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the smallest horse in the world, its name is Thumbelina. And Thumbelina has won the record as the smallest horse, and it is the size of a dog. I've seen it. It's it's adorable. It's adorable. They got they even use like puppy pads within the house for it so it can like chill in the house and then it just does its business on a puppy pad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Pretty cool. But what is what is cool about this uh small horses, they're not an and ponies is that people actually could have them as uh seen eye or like lead lead animals mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. somebody who's blind or somebody who who needs help because horses last longer than dogs and they're extremely smart and they don't shed so people who have allergies to to dogs could actually get a horse and be just as amazing as having a trained dog for service so they could be yeah. used as amazing service animals mm -hmm. So here's one for you, Mar. Tell me if this sounds appealing to you, if you would line up for this. There's an yeah, ice cream flavor. 
sold in Japan, and it's called raw horse flesh. That is the name of the flavor. I've talked about this in the past, guys. If you ever go to Japan, they've got some weird, funky chip flavors. They've got a ton of weird Kit Kat flavors. We talked about that on Undiscovered World. It translates something to like be successful or, or you are successful in Japanese. So all the school kids love Kit Kat. So they came up with like- You're lucky. I think he's 30, lucky. Yeah, some of them. So there's like 30 different really funky Kit Kat flavors. But apparently that carries over to ice cream too because they've got raw horse flesh flavored ice cream in Japan. I will not try that. That sounds okay. I bizarre. I mean, I barely like the matcha tea, and I love matcha tea, but just the ice cream itself, I don't. Okay. And but there's something there? you want to share more with I us? I have one, one, okay. because you already took all my trivia, like you okay. literally did. The sneakers and the hippos, thank you. But, but, there is a hormone replacement called Premarin. And Premarin is actually taken from pregnant horses' urine because the females who are pregnant produce the specific hormone and it is the best way to get it for humans. All right, I got a couple of stupid laws then I got a trivia question and then we're gonna get out of here. So in Florida, the penalty for horse theft is hanging. Yes. It's illegal to ride an ugly horse in Wilbur, Washington. I don't know who gets to determine whether they are ugly horses. I agree. Horses. Um, oh, in Iowa. It's illegal. Horses must not eat fire hydrants. So don't let your horse eat a fire hydrant if you are in <laughs> Iowa. I'm not making this stuff up, guys. Um, <laughs> Colorado, you cannot. Uh, it's illegal to ride a horse if you are inebriated. No, uh, no, no hitting the sauce and riding a horse there. Um, Queensland, Australia was the place where it was constitutional law still that you have to have um, uh, the poles, the railings outside to tie up your horses. Might be a forgetting law they're like it's on the books but we don't use it and in pennsylvania probably the most extreme motorists seeing horses coming in their direction must pull off the road not just give them right away no no they must cover themselves and their car in some form of camouflage blanket style or canvas in order to blend with the countryside until the horse passes i'm assuming this law was enacted sometime at the beginning of the car era uh, since horses wouldn't know what the cars are, they had to literally try to hide themselves. But this is the last fact video, Mar, we have before my ever so beloved Christmas, which is coming up here in ever so a couple days, which I'm thrilled about. So my trivia question for everybody, you're going to have to think of the song. Slurnip. What oh, no. is the name of the horse in the song Jingle Bells? Don't answer quickly if you know, Maria. Give everybody a second. There is a horse in the song Jingle Bells. What well, yeah, the whole song is about the bells jingling. And sleighs and stuff. But what's the race. horse's name, Maria? I can tell you I don't know. All right, guys. I'm going to give it a few more seconds out there because I didn't even, like, think about it at first. I'm like, wait, there, is, there must be a horse. You're talking about sleighs and bells, but I don't ever remember a horse's name. So the horse's name is actually Bobtail. Aww. In the lyrics, bells on Bobtail's reins. That's where we hear the horse's name. Bobtail's reins. Yeah. Bells okay. on his reins. So bells on Bobtail's reins. So. Yeah, I didn't understand that. I was going through the song and I didn't understand that part. Well, now that I makes the, sense. I knew the lyrics, but I never really, like bells on Bobtail, whatever. I didn't, never thought about what Bobtail was to go, oh, that's the horse's name. Me, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, no, when I listened to the song, I didn't understand that part, so I didn't oh, even realize gotcha. what he says. So I was like, gotcha. didn't even register because I couldn't understand. Okay. I'm like Guys, bobbing tail. Whatever. You enjoyed the video. We've got one more video coming out before Christmas. It is, of course, uh, one of our funny animal video uh, clip shows. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, holiday animal Christmas fun stuff out there. So go check that out. If for some reason you guys don't or we don't see you or talk to you between now and Christmas or the New Year's. Have a fantastic holiday season, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, all the Patreon subscribers, we are going to jump into the after show here in about 30 seconds. Everybody else, we will see you next time again. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. See you next time.